All right, uh, come on. Hello, my name is Kong Chi Wang, a leader with Tech Action Hmong Organization Program. I have a lot of things I want to change in Minnesota. For the Hmong community and for all of us here, I care about the lack of affordable housing for elderly Hmong people. I care about good education for our children. I care about people being lost and isolated in our system. I want to live in a state where people are in this together and where there is fair housing, fair economy, and, um, but before I can begin to work with you, um, as governor, on the many things I care about, you have to win. I have worked for many successful campaigns, both on a national level and on a local level. Most recently, I was co-headed Kajua Kong Tao's election to the St. Paul uh, School Board, and I know what it's like to win. And um, most importantly, I know it takes a lot of work, a real plan, and strong supporter. But it's more than that. You need something that um, is unique and different from other candidates. So we know you'll work hard, and we know that you have a good team, and we know that you'll do all the usual things that makes a good campaign. But other than this, what makes your candidacy unique and different from past losing campaign? What special qualification or quality in a company campaign strategy will make you a winner? Well. Let me start off by saying this, you know, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a leader, I'm not a millionaire. I'm a common, ordinary, blue-collar worker like most of the people in this room. I know what it's like to not have a paycheck. I know what it's like to not have health insurance. I carry those principles to the capital. You know, I think this is the year in, 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 in these economic times where people might be looking for somebody who pulled a plow or pulled on ranches instead of got a, uh, a you know, law degree from uh, Harvard or wherever. This is the time where people are going to be looking for someone who can raise hope, not just raise money. Uh, I don't need to remind a lot of people in this room that uh, about 20 years ago, a little guy that uh, was a little more unkempt than me, I guess, uh, ran for office and uh, had well, actually four suits than I do too. but. Uh, uh, you know, nobody gave a snowball's chance in hell in winning an election. And Rudy Perpich came back to run for the first time where he actually had to run for the government. <coughs> nobody said he, everybody said he can't beat Warren Spanis. You know, and then I don't want to bring up Jesse Ventura in this room, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> and so there you have three examples. On the other hand, you know, you had people like Norm Coleman. I remember in the Ventura when he filed his first campaign papers, he had raised $80,000 on December 31st. Skip Humphrey had raised 1.2 and Norm Coleman 1.4 won that election. You know, I'm doing pretty good in raising money from people that just give me 20 bucks and 30 bucks and 50 bucks. And that's how I'm going to connect. I, my campaign slogan isn't something that I made up. It was made up by the people that know me at the Capitol. If it had been my campaign slogan, it would have been brutally honest because I've been that way. But in a statewide race, I pulled it off just a little so I could win. But, you know, I've been very honest at the Capitol. I don't pull any punches. What I say here tonight, I'm going to say everywhere. If there was a Republican blogger in the room that I've been talking to a few times, I'd be saying the same thing. I think people want an honest politician that's straightforward with them. I get Republicans to vote for me all the time, and they don't agree with one thing that I believe in. But they like me because I'm upfront and honest with them. You know, so that's what I'm going to do to win this election. Uh, again, it's not about raising money; it's about raising hope, and I've been doing that for years with people in the constituents that send me to St. Paul, and I'll do it with people all over the state of Minnesota. So speaking of brutally honest, if you can uh, give us a window a little bit more into your campaign strategy, it's uh, clear that you're going to use this message um, to general voters. You're competing for the DFL endorsement. What's your strategy for winning the endorsement? My strategy for winning the endorsement has been to go around this uh, state and meet people all over this state to attend a number of your events, quite a few I might add. Uh, I think this is the sixth tonight, but in any event, uh, uh, I have been calling, I have purchased the van legally, and, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I have been calling delegates, I've been in the car calling delegates, 
I have been to every event. I've spent sometimes on my own when staffers uh, wanted a day off and that, and I gave them. I've got seven staff, okay? You know, I don't have 30 staff. I've got seven staff, and uh, uh, I'm paying them what I can afford and paying them health insurance uh, uh, that I can afford, and uh, we are making do. And my name is getting out there, and my phone calling is going great. And I can tell all of you in this room one thing. I don't profess to be the front runner in this race, but I'm going to tell you one thing. There is no front runner in this race with the delegates I'm calling. There is none. And anybody that thinks they are a front runner is full of BS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question, Paul. My name is uh, Paul Sobosinski. You don't have to introduce yourself to me. <laughs> <laughs> I slept with him. Well, I just slept with him. Sitsky, you look me in the eye right now in front of all these people and you tell me that in your 20 some years at the Capitol there's ever been more a person more than me that's listened to your request. You tell these people if they're happy. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> because anytime you and Bobby King and the hippie other hippie farmers as I call them, <laughs> come to me, I have try to do because I believe in the family farm. You know, I know how hard you struggle and I put the money in there for the land stewardship request and your request uh, for uh, whether it was the dairy research that we were trying to do or the livestock research that we were trying to do to keep money in the pockets of the average common ordinary family farmer. And I will continue to do that and if I had if I win this election, and I think I've got a damn good shot at it. I'm going to have a farmer that runs a family farm. And I can't promise you tonight, Sobosinski, that you're going to be the Commissioner of Agriculture. <laughs> or, that, or that my former roommate, Teddy Winter, or Claire Nelson, farmers are going to be the Ag Commissioner. But it'll be somebody in that bay that will be there. And I'm looking for a good woman farmer, quite frankly, so the Sitsky, so if you know what, keep her in mind. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I come from an area that depends on natural resources, just as much as your area depends on natural resources. I'm a person that knows, coming from rural Minnesota, that isn't a farm area, by the way. We farm rocks and trees. And we have a lot of problem with some people in this room when we try to farm rocks and trees, even though they want to use the products that come on from the farms and the trees, or the, the mines and the trees. But I know what it's like to live in a rural economy. I had 17 and a half and 16% unemployment this summer in Hibbing in Virginia, one of the highest areas in the state. And I'm smart enough to know that a lot of people in this metro economy have a job because agriculture is 20% still of our entire economy. That I am smart enough to know. And we have to figure out a way to add value to your products. You had a beautiful farm, those little squealing pigs, I can still see them <laughs> running across your front lawn, so it's a Sensky. And uh, you know, that's the way that animals and livestock should be raised, not being shot up with hormones and, and, and uh, antibiotics to keep them alive because they're raised in their own, well, whatever. 